Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna do a super fun fabric tumbler tutorial. I absolutely love using fabric on my tumblers and it is honestly a very easy process. If you are new here, my name is Allison and I'm so excited you are here watching this video. I post weekly tumbler tutorials, so if you like the video and like the channel, make sure you subscribe because it helps me out so much and I appreciate all of your support. You can use any fabric on your tumblers. Can we just take a second to see how shiny this bright tone tumbler is? Anyway, I tend to use just like regular cotton fabric, but a lot of people like more stretchy fabric. Literally any fabric is fine. You can get fabric from your local Joann's or you can get it online. You can check Facebook Marketplace. If you know anyone that sells, check and see if they have any scraps for you because you don't need a big piece when you're making a tumbler. There are also some places that sell specifically like tumbler cut fabric. So it's just sized appropriately and a lot of them get their um, patterns like custom printed. So I will link a few underneath this video. I'm so excited to show you this tumbler. It is so fun and an easy way to bring really, really fun patterns to your tumblers. Let's get started. We're gonna start by measuring our tumbler and cutting our fabric. I think it is easiest to get your fabric cut in advance. So my tumbler is about eight inches tall, but I don't want my fabric to go top to bottom. So I'm gonna cut mine at about seven and a half inches. And then all the way around, I'm just using this like cheap tape measure. You can get them on Amazon. I will link one down below. But measuring the width of your rectangle cut will be just a little bit bigger than this. So this is about nine and three eighths. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it at about 10 inches. I do want that one to be a little bit bigger. So you can see that rectangle. You're gonna start by prepping and base coating your tumbler. And we are using Crystalac glitter glue to apply our fabric. You can brush on a generous amount of glitter glue. A lot of it is gonna get soaked up into your fabric. So don't worry about using too much. You're gonna be just fine. So I'm just brushing it out so it is relatively smooth. And then I like to place my, my cup down on my fabric and sort of scoop it up from the back and get it nice and tight. So you can see that I cut my height of that rectangle at about seven and a half. So there's room on top and bottom for glitter. And the width I did about 10 inches, so it will overlap by about an inch. Take your hands and get this nice and smooth. You don't want any air pockets or bubbles. And you can add glitter glue as you need to get this nice and stuck down. Like I said, don't worry about using too much. Use enough glue and use your fingers um, just to make sure it is nice and stuck. The next step is gonna to be to trim our excess fabric where it overlaps. So what I like to do is add a coat of glitter glue all around the outside just to make sure that my fabric is completely stuck down. So I'm just gonna go around and I'm using my finger because I noticed there were um, a little, a place where it was raised. You may want to use gloves just so you know because glitter glue is very, very sticky. So I just went all the way around and added that first coat of glitter glue over the top of my fabric. Specifically, I want to make sure that that seam where they overlap is secure because I'm about to trim it and I don't want it to move anywhere so I have a nice crisp line. Once your fabric is secure, you can trim it. Right in the middle of where they overlap, I'm going through with my rotary blade. If you do a lot of fabric tumblers or work with fabric, you will absolutely not regret buying one of these blades. It is so much easier than using an X-Acto knife. Um, just trust me. I highly recommend that you invest in it. I got mine from Amazon. You can get it from Joann's. They're not expensive and well worth it. So once I got that cut, I just went in with just a little bit more glitter glue to make sure that seam where my fabric meets is fully secured down and nice and flat. You need to let this dry for two hours. You're gonna repeat this process and do two more coats of glitter glue every two hours over the top of your fabric. Once you have about three coats of glitter glue on top and let it fully dry, you can add your glitter. 
So again, I have three coats of glitter glue on this and I let it dry. And now I'm just going to tape off the fabric to get a nice crisp line. I'm just using regular blue painter's tape. Once you have that taped off, you can apply your glitter. I chose to use glitter glue for this tumbler. Um, you can use bright tone if you prefer, but all I did was brush on my glitter glue. Again, make sure that you brush it out so it is nice and smooth. If you leave it where there are like globs or streaks anywhere, it's that's gonna show through the glitter. So I went ahead and brushed on my glitter glue and my friend Kim is helping me here to apply my glitter. This is a green glitter from the Glitter Pharmacy. I will put the name in the comments or in the description box below. It was a per literally a perfect pair for this fabric. And I don't think I said it earlier, but this fabric I think is from Hobby Lobby. I don't know if they still have it or if that's 100% where it is from, but Either way, I'm just brushing on my glitter glue and sprinkling on that glitter. I let the this step, this glitter needs to dry for two hours. Remember, anytime that you use glitter glue, you need to let it dry for two hours. If it's completely dry, you can remove your tape. You can even seal it before you do this, but I would let it dry completely before you take off any of your tape and you're gonna get a nice crisp line. I am gonna add vinyl strips later, so it's okay if it's not 100% perfect, but once it is dry for two hours, you can go ahead and dry brush your tumbler. So I'm just going to brush off any excess glitter and make sure I don't have much on my fabric. You know, you don't really want um, glitter all over the tumbler. So give it a good dry brush and then it is time to seal it with glitter glue. I do like to seal my tumblers and have them on my cup turner because the glitter glue is thin and a little watery, so it runs just a little bit. So I just like to have it spinning just to make sure it doesn't drip all over the place and it just works a little bit better. So what I'm doing is just brushing on my glitter glue and I'm gonna let this dry for two hours. Now it is time to do our layers of bright tone. Before I go in with my bright tone, I always smush or flatten my glitter. I am using a brayer roller just because I feel like it. You could also just roll it in parchment paper on your table, but getting the glitter as flat as possible allows you to move a little quicker through the process because you'll use less coats of bright tone. So then I am going to do about four coats of bright tone maybe five. Remember that every coat needs to dry for four hours at least before you put on another one. So do a coat, wait at least four hours, and then do another. And you're going to go until you have four or five coats of bright tone. Again, it's very important that you let each coat dry for four hours before re-coating with your bright tone. So the goal here is to get a smooth surface between the glitter and the fabric. So when you sand, I want you to only sand the glitter. You do not need to sand the entire cup. This helps it level out faster, meaning I'm gonna bring down, basically bring down the bright tone over the glitter while still allowing the bright tone on the fabric to build up to get these smoother faster. You can also sand over the seam if you need to, but focus on just sanding over your glitter. So you're gonna sand after about four or five coats of bright tone, you're gonna do three more coats of bright tone, sand a second time, and if you need to, do three more coats of bright tone and sand a third time. Just continue that process until the area where the glitter meets the fabric is completely smooth. So in order to cut your vinyl strips, you're going to open, this is Silhouette Studio, but you can do this in Design Space, and you're going to make rectangles, like quite literally draw a rectangle. I like to make them about 11 inches, and the height really depends on what you're going for. You can measure on your tumbler, but I'm gonna do about 0 0.08 for, oops, I locked it. So let's unlock that and do the height of about 0 0.08. Um, and then you can just copy and paste this and cut a bunch of your rectangles. You may want them a little bit bigger. I think like 0.15 is more of a thicker style or you could do, 
you know, 0.05 would be a thin strip. And we're talking about the height here. You can make the width as wide as you want. I like to kind of line them all up on my sheet and they're really spread out. So you could even bring them closer together because you don't really want to waste any vinyl. So if I bring this up here, something I like to do in silhouette is highlight them go to this modify panel. I like to line them up in the center and then space them out vertically so they're all nice and spaced out. So you can decide what size you want to do. Again, 0 0.08, 0 0.15, 0 0.05, and then I just make them about 11 inches wide. And you can decide if you don't like the width of it, you can recut them. But we're just cutting this in our permanent vinyl. So I'm gonna send it to my silhouette and cut it in the vinyl of my choice. Then it is time to put on your vinyl strips. I am basically splitting. So half of that vinyl strip is on the fabric and half is on the glitter. Just know it takes some practice to get this on straight and it is completely normal to have to sort of pull it back and try again. I wanted to show you here, like I definitely struggled with this one and I had to pull it back and replace it several times. So I just want you to know that it's normal to have to try multiple times. So then I'm just going to use my knife to cut where they meet and pull away the piece that overlaps. And then I'm going to apply the vinyl to the other side. Again, this vinyl is a brushed metallic from the Vinyl People. Um, one of my most used types of vinyl. I love their brushed metallic. I love the opals. That's pretty much what I use exclusively, not necessarily only from them, but just in general. So I will put a link to those underneath this video. So get your vinyl on and then you're going to do coats of bright tone. Do about four coats of bright tone over the top of this vinyl. I generally just bright tone right away, but it does help if you wait a couple hours before you apply any bright tone just to ensure that that vinyl is really nice and stuck. So similar to the glitter step, we're going to sand only over the vinyl. This will help smooth out our cup even faster. So after about four coats of vinyl or four coats of bright tone, give it a light sand just over the vinyl and then you can finish this up with about four more coats. If you want, you can sand a second time and add more bright tone. It's really up to you to get that desired finish, right? Whatever you want to do, whatever you like is what you should do. Not to mention that you should use a skinny straight tumbler just to make your life easier. I get mine from Craft Haven, highly recommend, and I am obsessed with how this turned out. Like, look at how cute this is. I love using glitter glue for fabric. It makes it so easy. If you want to learn how I use glitter glue to apply scrapbook paper and learn how to do a scrapbook paper tumbler, make sure you watch the video on your screen.